Welcome aboard BioTrek as we sail the South Pacific and explore our ocean world. Please subscribe and ring the notification bell so you're the first to know when we post a new video. In our last episode, we were at Fakarava in the Tuamotos and we sailed to Tahiti. We needed to get to Papiti, Tahiti to check Tiller into the country officially with a veterinarian from biosecurity. I think I'll do a whole video on having a dog in French Polynesia a bit later. It's pretty interesting and you need to plan ahead. We stayed at Papiti Marina, which is right in the center of town, so very conveniently located. After the formalities with the dog were done, we sailed to nearby Moria, which you can see easily from Tahiti. We were a little apprehensive the first time we went to Moria because the noon site, which is the site for cruisers to find information in different countries, did not have very many good things to say about the changes in the society islands since the beginning of the pandemic when many boats were stuck in French Polynesia. A report in noon site gives an unflattering image suggesting that the opinion is it's already too crowded and you should just sail on by. Moreover, the committee that oversees the management of the waters in Moria, the PGEM, had come up with some new rules. It was suggested to reduce the number of boats that would be recommended for anchoring in various locations, and that number would be reduced to zero in Okinawa Bay, the destination we wanted to head to. For more information, we turn to the website of the Association de Voiliers en Polynesie Française, so the Sailing Association from French Polynesia, and found out that the new rules were controversial when we're stuck in court. So, looking at the map, we were still able to anchor in Moria if we stayed away from the yellow marker of restricted anchoring by the PGEM. And we decided to head off to Okinawa Bay. So the weather is definitely different inside the bay. And we're gonna head over there. Lisa and Mia turn around and wave. <laughs> Getting ready to anchor. Dream so team. Lisa, talk about how you pick a place to anchor. Well, you pick a place based on depth, how close it is to other boats, where your boat might swing if the wind's gonna change, where your boat might swing if there's no wind, like there's no wind today. And you know, the deeper it is, the more chain you have to have out, so the more you're gonna swing. And uh, yeah. And here in Moria, They've also changed the rules, and so some places are you're not supposed to anchor. This was supposed to be one of the places you weren't supposed to anchor, but we figure safety in numbers because there's a lawsuit going on between the sailing association and the um, organization that made the new rules about where boats can and can't go in Moria. So we are a little uncertain about what we can and can't do. We want to obey the rules, but here we are. So here, we're trying to find somewhere to anchor. It's uh, very shallow, as you might see. And there's quite a few boats. <laughs> so talk, Mia. No, I was just saying, it's this, this, this is a very challenging, um, it's very challenging when there's no wind because you have to wait for the tidal change and the currents. And that's why if you look over there, pan the camera that way, you're gonna see the boats in every which direction. Yep. And that's because, so a captain has to decide and think ahead, all right, what's my wind gonna be doing? What's my current gonna be doing when they drop the anchor? And how much chain do they all have out? Uh, we usually do a minimum of five to one. So we're gonna be dropping about 20 feet of water. So we'll put out a minimum 80 foot chain and then we'll put the bridle on, which is like another 30. So, it is an art. You don't sleep well at night unless you're well anchored. Oh, that's 
Good thing there's so many artists on the boat. Well, there's no rocks here, so... No, it's, it's all sand, so that's good. It looks soft. But, um, Why is sand better than uh, rocks? Because the anchor will dig in. We have current in the front and wind in the back. Okay, I'm happy with that. So you were going in reverse full force to make sure the anchor held? Not full, 2000 RPM. Yeah. It's coming from behind us. The current is coming from in front because of the tide. But you see some boats are starting to turn because of the wind. Some boats are not turning because of the wind, they're turning because of the current. So <laughs> if all the boats were the same, it'd be easy. Yeah. But because some boats have a deep keel, they get more affected by the current. Some people who had no keel like us will get more affected by the wind. And boat collide anchors <laughs> okay. and yeah. then uh, me and Lisa just explain the bridle for those of us who don't know well that's so the chain's not pulling on the winch so uh, you, you never want to have a lot of pressure on the winch so you for the catamaran you, you attach from the two holes and it's the rope that's taking the load not the chain that's going to the winch on the boat side and how much chain did you put out we think we put out about, and it's a think, because Mia has her way and I have my way, and we came up with the same number. Um, I count. You're looking at some marks that I, I'm not sure are reliable. <laughs> and uh, we came up with the same number. We tried to put out 60, and then we have another 30 with the bridle. And how deep is it? 20. A little less than 20, so we were right on the mark, 5 to 1. Awesome. Let's swim. And we held at, what was our RPMs? Yeah. Oh. Steady at 20, so we're in good shape. That's oh, perfect. Yeah, that's good. That, yeah. that means yeah. we can have a windstorm tonight and the anchor's not going to drag. Yeah. But awesome. Still, still we put anchor alarm. We have alarms on circle of the boat. Alarm on depth. Alarm on too low depth, too high depth. On, uh, and high also wind, high, high winds. Wind. <laughs> so, so it's and very it likely, especially the first night, it's very likely it will, will trigger at least one of those alarms. <laughs> And Good thing I'm a light sleeper. The alarm sounds <laughs> like a, a siren going off. Wee, wee. Uh -huh. Yeah. All right. That's, um, that's a wrap on the anchoring. That's a wrap. <laughs> and the anchoring is get a checking the anchor, which we have three volunteers. Pierre is getting ready to go down and check the anchor line. Make sure everything's good. And it's so hot, everybody's going. You can tell her. We have a beautiful rainbow right off the front of the boat. I don't know that it's showing up on the video, but it's quite lovely. Selfies on Biotrek. Gotta love those selfies. <laughs> <laughs> Just
Later that night, we saw some slimy, gooey stuff going by the boat. We were looking at it with flashlights. Oh my god. Tell her, do not go in there. It is so disgusting. Come to the conclusion that it was waste being dumped by the nearby hotel with those beautiful overwater cabins. We showed this in episode 99. Later, upon returning to Tahiti, I contacted the Sailing Association of French Polynesia, who then consulted a biologist at the marine station. They let us know that it was not likely pollution, but probably natural material that was originating from the reef. Although samples would be needed to confirm that. A bit of digging on the internet suggested the gooey mass was likely coral spawn, and seaweed and garbage simply got caught up in it. So this mystery appears to be solved, and perhaps is a lesson in hastily jumping to conclusions. It was kind of gooey, and the hull of the boat did need cleaning after the coral spawn had passed by that night. The nice thing about living on a sailboat is that the dive shop will come and pick you up right at your own home. My two favorite people hanging out together. I just texted you and said cocktails needed on the front, on the bow. Okay. <laughs> Moria. This trail is full of flowers. We also visited Cook's Bay to go out to a local crepe restaurant and afterwards watch the locals play patong. After a fabulous time in Moria, we returned to Tahiti with its bright markets, happy and friendly people, and music everywhere. She also said goodbye to Mia in Tahiti. She was going home to visit family after three months with Biotrek. Hopefully she'll be back again when we do another long passage.
here she is doing her Hello America COVID test to be able to get on the plane. All right, so all we do is celebrate on Biotrack. <laughs> we celebrate all the different um, anniversaries, the celebrations of uh, goals that we accomplish, and all sorts of things. But anyways, I got a little present for Lisa because it's her birthday tomorrow, but I'm leaving. But we're celebrating everything, life and beautifulness. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> oh my goodness, it's beautiful. <laughs> I gotta try it on, it's beautiful. <laughs> a little local shop. A, a little Tahiti. A little Aloha Tahiti. It's gorgeous. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Mia. Oh, thank you, Mia. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's got a bone. She's she, 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 she not gonna jump on us. She's got a bone. Oh, no, pretty girl. Oh, all right. Thank We're gonna miss Mia. There we so are. So you've seen her in all our videos. We didn't do a little interview. We'll do it when you come back. Yeah. No, we keep saying we're gonna do it later, but uh, when you come we'll back, get it done. Well, when you come back, we'll do it. But she's going home for a little home visit. And see uh, my hundred-year-old grandmother. Make yeah. sure she's okay. That's it. That's important. Yeah, absolutely. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> in Tahiti, there's music everywhere. And in the marina on some days, it starts in the afternoon and it goes on all night. We can just sit and enjoy from our boat. Thank you. 